elsewhere on the northeast. Now, uh, take a look at this live picture of Haverton, Pennsylvania. The snow beginning to fall there. A lot of these places going to just get pummeled with this wintry mix. Now, ahead of this massive coastal winter storm, the governors of New Jersey and Pennsylvania have declared a state of emergency. And here in New York, the governor is telling people to stay off the roads if they do not need to travel, uh, just stay home. Now, making matters worse, places like Sandwich, Massachusetts, still trying to recover from the nor'easter that hit this past weekend. Uh, still, hundreds of thousands of people are without power. And of course, the storm might make it even harder for them to get that power back. The storm has been shifting from west to east. Uh, we could see as many as two to three inches of snow an hour in some places. And guys, the storm is going to make travel much more difficult. Some 1,900 flights have already been canceled and 2,600 flights, according to FlightAware, have been delayed. Rob, Jillian. All right, Lauren, thank you very much. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos will visit students and teachers at the Florida High School today, about three weeks after the deadly shooting killed 17 people. This as a conservative survivor speaks out about his classmates abruptly hanging up during their phone call with President Trump. I'm really trying to control my anger at what he said. David Hogg was like, we have to make a change. Let's make this happen. And then the, the White House calls you and it was like, let's do it. I totally agree. Let's make the change. And then you hang up on him and then you brag about it on national television. It's extremely counterproductive. Kyle Kashev has said he's willing to work with both sides of the aisle as well as meet with the NRA. Today, senior advisor to President Trump, Jared Kushner, is heading to Mexico to meet with President Enrique Peña Nieto. The two are expected to discuss security, immigration, and trade issues. This comes after President Trump postponed the Mexican leader's first visit to the White House last month after disagreements on who would pay for the southern border wall. President Trump's top economic advisor resigning hours after refusing to support proposed tariffs on steel and aluminum imports. Gary Cohen had been discussing leaving the White House for weeks while opposing the tariffs plan. He later said it was an honor to serve in the White House, and the president said he did a superb job. He then tweeted, quote, we'll be making a decision soon on the appointment of new chief economic advisor. Many people wanting the job will choose wisely. Cohen will still serve for several more weeks. Well, it may be a new year, but that isn't stopping the mainstream media's bias when it comes to covering President Trump. Media Research Center analyzed ABC, CBS, and NBC's evening newscasts in January and February and found 10 times more negative comments about the president than positive ones. They also found that the ongoing Russia probe once again swamped everything else, getting more than twice the coverage of any other topic, despite a lot of accomplishments uh, in the last few months from the administration. North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un telling South Korea he won't attack, committing to denuclearization talks as President Trump warns the world is watching. We have come certainly a long way, at least rhetorically, with North Korea. Uh, these are the cards we were dealt. We're handling it properly. And again, as I said, uh, hopefully we'll go in the very, very peaceful, beautiful path. We're prepared to go whichever path is necessary. One way or the other, we have to do something. All right, so is this an honest change of heart, or is, it all a ploy, or is it all just a ploy to win favor on the international stage? You're now to weigh in as former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations and Fox News contributor John Bolton. Ambassador, thanks so much for coming on this morning. Glad uh, to be with you. You know, the president on, on these types of things seems to be pragmatic. I, I can't imagine that he thinks that negotiating and, and going easy on Kim Jong-un now would be a good idea. What do you say? Yeah, no, he's made it very clear. We're, we're not changing any of our policies just because they want to talk. And I think uh, it's helpful if you say, well, what are North Korea's motives for this and, and what are their objectives? And I think their motives are a combination of the fact they are very close to achieving an objective they've been after for 30 years, which is how to get deliverable nuclear weapons. Uh, and they want to cross the finish line uh, w without being interrupted. Uh, but they fear Donald Trump. I mean, I think they finally figured out he's not Barack Obama. When he says that the uh, military option is on the table, they know it. I think they understand that while he may not want to use the military option, he's not afraid to if he has to. So their, their motive is to, is to buy time. It's not to denuclearize. 
uh, and their objective is obviously very different from what a negotiation from the U.S. point of view would bring. We want denuclearization through negotiation. They simply want to get the capability to hit the United States. Well, President Trump has addressed the issue. He also sent out a tweet saying possible progress is being made in talks with North Korea. For the first time in many years, a serious effort is being made by all parties concerned. The world is watching and waiting. Maybe false hope, but the U.S. is ready to go hard in either direction. A couple of things that um, that I don't know catch my attention there is the word serious. Is North Korea serious about this? And also false hope. Is it false hope? Well, I think he's giving them the benefit of the doubt. I've always said the president's an optimistic man, but but I think he understands exactly what North Korea is uh, is up to here, and and that's why the fact that uh, he he do, he's not afraid of. Uh, contemplating the military option is important. To the extent there's any minimal chance of a diplomatic resolution, it comes in direct proportion from how Pyongyang and Beijing, I might say, view the seriousness of an American military threat. They didn't take it seriously before. I think they do now. Ambassador, is there an opportunity here? I mean, you know, a great end to all this would be getting this regime out of power, removing them. Uh, it seems like this is a great opportunity because they're desperate now. Obviously, if they're coming to the table, uh, they're hungry. They don't have any money. The, you know, the sanctions are working. How do you get this guy out of there and how do you free these people in this country? Well, I think uh, obviously the, the long-term answer is the reunification of the Korean Peninsula. It was divided in 1945, supposedly temporarily. I think to do that effectively and most likely peacefully, you need the Chinese engaged. I think uh, we're, we're running out of time just given North Korea's technological progress. But I think the real diplomatic play here is not with North Korea, but with China. And I think uh, that's something the president's aware of, too. All right. All right. Ambassador Bolton, thank you very much. We appreciate your time this yeah. morning. Glad to be with you. It is 36 minutes after the hour. Immigration interference. The Trump Justice Department suing the state of California over sanctuary city laws. So how does that work? Judge Napolitano is here live to weigh in. A ridiculous dash cam video from a DWI suspect, the man who tried to escape police but was run over by his oh, own car. Wait until you see it. <laughs> and is this exactly what the White House Easter egg roll needs? Vegan candy? Carly Shimkus here live with the petition from PETA for the bunny filled. Candace or said which party she wants to run for. We'll see. Yes, we will. Nancy Pelosi said she spit up, but flight attendants told her that she would have to leave the plane because her baby was too sick to fly. And to add insult to injury, when she did deboard the plane, she discovered that her baggage with all of her baby's things in it was still on the plane. So social media is outraged and they are taking their complaints to Facebook. Andrew says all parents know babies just spit up and rarely it's from illness. Sounds like spirit employees need some family sensitivity training. And Lindsay says, wow, that's ridiculous. Sorry they put you through that. Now, Spirit Airlines said in a statement that uh, the safety of the passenger and the child was their number one priority. They also refunded her flight, offered her uh, to fly on the next uh, uh, flight, and they also offered her two round trip tickets for her troubles. Mm. But still, yeah. yes, a little spit up, uh, and yeah, you get that's kicked not off. A, not a good look for spirit. All right, yes. Florida uh, lawmakers banning these free speech zones yeah. on the college campuses. That's huh? right. So Florida's House of Representatives did this just that. So that means that the entire uh, college campus is now essentially a free speech zone. So uh, State Representative Bob Rommel said, I've received thousands and thousands of calls from students that feel uh, their right to speak freely where they want to and outside areas has been infringed upon. So a lot of people think that this is a really good idea, including Thomas, who says if it isn't free to all, it's not free at all. Another Twitter user says, so we now have to pass a law to make our First Amendment rights legal. And uh, Mark says the uh, snowflakes are melting. So uh, the bill would uh, allow state colleges to be sued if students or others intentionally disrupt or hinder 
campus speakers. So there's a call right. for vegan candy at the White House? Yeah, that's right. Do you think it's going to happen? So you know the know. Uh, White House Easter egg roll coming up. I can't believe it's already, we're already getting to that time of the year. But uh, PETA's vice president said this in a statement. You've said that no child should feel isolated, but some who are lactose intolerant or won't drink milk because they love cows feel isolated from other children because they eat only non-dairy Easter candy. So Bob on uh, John on social media says, seriously, vegan candy PETA would get much more respect if they were not such extremists. One more tweet uh, says, what the heck is vegan candy? <laughs> well, they said that they would provide some to the White House and vegan candy would include milk free chocolate yeah, eggs like almond milk stuff like right, that i tell right. you I'm, I'm like those intolerant was the worst day of my life when i figured it out i miss oh, milk so much about but i gotta i gotta eat yeah. these pills every time i want to you know have so a little bit of chocolate have you ever like had that. vegan candy before no okay. i eat the real stuff but i take a pill so that i can eat it <laughs> and, you know, try it doesn't make me sick yeah it's it, yeah i we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it yeah we'll talk break. about it later thanks, carly uh, carly thank you so <laughs> much a lot. sanctuary city throwdown the trump justice department slapping the state of california with a lawsuit over immigration interference. So do they have a case here? Judge Andrew Napolitano is live next to talk about that. But first, let's check in with Steve Ducey to see what's coming up on Fox and Friends. Good morning, Steve. Hello, Jillian. Hello, Rob. Uh, coming up, if you could save a life, would you do it? Well, of course you'd say yes, but what if it required you donating a kidney to somebody you didn't know very well? You are about to meet two men, both Marines. The younger guy donated the kidney to the guy in his 50s. They both work down in Jacksonville. You will meet them both live on Fox and Friends. What a story they've got. Also, Judge Napolitano is going to join us. We've got Tommy Laren. And we're going to tell you uh, more about that story about the superintendent of schools at the high school that apologized because her students ran up the score. What kind of lesson does that teach kids? We're going to talk about that and so much more. We've got a busy three hours. Kicks off 14 minutes from right now, right here on the channel. You trust for your morning news. Rob and Jillian return in two minutes. Immigration interference. The Trump Justice Department suing the state of California for deliberately interfering with federal immigration policies. The DOJ claiming three new state laws recently passed make it impossible for officials to do their jobs. So do they have a case? Here to discuss is Fox News senior judicial analyst, Judge Andrew Napolitano. Thank you for joining uh, good us. Good morning, guys. A pleasure to be here. So what do you think? Do they have a case? Well, well yes and no. Uh, this is a very unusual situation. So this is not a case like here in New York where the mayor has said to the police department, don't cooperate with ICE. These are actual, as Rob said in the intro, these are actual statutes, laws and actions by the legislature of California that forbid, you don't have the option, mm -hmm. forbid cooperating with ICE. So does the state of California, do state officials have to tell ICE where illegal immigrants are? Answer no, mm -hmm. under federal law and under state law. But here's the kicker. California, one of these statutes that California enacted prohibits private employers from cooperating with ICE. That is a serious First Amendment problem. Mm. That is the state silencing private employers. So ICE comes knocking, you own a little shop, and they say, uh, do you employ anyone who's not here legally, even if they're an independent contractor, or you know of anyone that's here uh, illegally? It's a crime in California for you to answer that question. Mm. And that's a violation of the First Amendment. So part of the federal lawsuit, I think, will prevail. The part yeah. that's trying to invalidate that statute, thou shalt not speak. Part of that, I think, the state will prevail because it can direct its own employees mm. not to cooperate with the feds. Let's look at the filing here. Here's part of it. Uh, we're going to bring it up. California has no authority to enforce laws that obstruct or otherwise conflict with or discriminate against.